All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. God, I thank you for what's in here. I thank you for the provisions of your word. I ask, God, that you would, would, would work in our lives. And, and, Father, I just pray that your word would come alive to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach the abridged version of this message today. Abridged? Did I, say, I didn't say that right. Probably no. Abridged, right? I'm gonna, there you go. The abridged version of this message, but I want to get to it because it's powerful. It's something we can all use, and quite frankly, I'm going to preach myself happy. <laughs> uh, my pastor had cancer, and, 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 and was, he was a pretty, good, pretty big man. He got down to about 98 pounds and got to where he couldn't get out of bed and couldn't get himself up and was really dwindling away. And the Lord had spoke to him and said, incline your word to my, incline your ear to my word or health to your flesh and marrow to your bones. And he began to stand at knowing that God would heal him. Now, I don't know why God doesn't heal everybody. I don't have any answers for that. But he believed God spoke to him that he would heal him. And he would get to the point where he just couldn't get out of bed and his wife would come and Velma would come and say, Clayton, you know, you should get up. And he's like, I'm not going to get up today. And Velma would say, oh, God's word must not be true today, huh? And he'd start, I mean, he'd start, then he'd start preaching to her. And he'd start sharing the word with her. And he'd start quoting the scriptures to her. And pretty quick, he'd be up, feeling better. He did die, but not of cancer. Matter of fact, he was 100% healed of cancer. And when he died, it was of old age. And he started three churches after that. Matter of fact, the church he was a pastor of, when he was my pastor, he had already started two other churches before the one that he was pastor of when I was there. He said, I have been checked upside down, sideways, and every way, and there's no cancer left in my body. God healed him. But he would have to, sometimes he would have to preach himself happy by getting into the word. And today, if I'm not speaking to you, I'm speaking to me. <laughs> And I'm going to use God's word to do what only God's word can do, and that's to build us. And I'm starting in John chapter 16, verse 33. Matthew, John 16, 33. Hallelujah. Father, anoint your word. God, pour out your word and do what only you can do. John 16, 33. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things have I spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In just a, 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 a few verses before this, Jesus was beginning to tell his disciples, Hey, I'm going away. I'm leaving. And you're going to have sorrow. But your sorrow will be turned to joy. So that there's an event coming. And it's going to be hard for you to understand. And, 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 and I'm going away. I'm going to the Father. And then he told them that, that they're going to be scattered, but that the Father would be with him. And then he said, I'm telling you that you might have peace because you are going to have tribulation. I looked that tribulation up, and it means trouble. <laughs> it, means, it means you're going to have trouble, persecutions, and, and all of those things that go away. You're going to have trouble. You know, we are all face trouble. I don't care who you are, and I don't care how good things are going for you right now. Maybe things are not going good for you right now. I have no idea, but we will all face challenging times in our life, every one of us. God doesn't take them away. God doesn't keep us away from it. God doesn't keep us from going through it. We're all going to go through trouble, every one of us. He said, but be of good cheer. He said, be at peace, for I have overcome the world. And we're in the world, and God said, I've overcome it. And if I've overcome it, then I'm going to be there with you. Turn in John chapter 4. I love this. John chapter 4, 4 verse John 4, 4. And you don't have to really turn there if you don't want to, but 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that is in me. I love this. I love the fact, the understanding that God has, that Christ beat all of, all of the sin and death. God, Christ beat all of the wickedness in the world. Sometimes it doesn't feel like the world, that, the, that wickedness is losing. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that we're winning. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, that things are going the way they should. Be of great peace. 
and understand, understand that the God that's in me is bigger than the problems of the world. I love the my kids. I taught them a song. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than the ocean. He's bigger than, you know, every, I, I remember all of the song. But God is bigger than the boogeyman. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that my God can't do. And in the middle of everything that goes on, in everything that happens in our life, you're going to feel like God has abandoned you sometimes. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> no, you're going to feel trouble. You're going to feel struggles. You're going to experience those things. But they will pass. They're not going to stay. There is glory beyond this. There's more to come. There's better. There's more. There's great. God is greater. And he's in me. And the God that's in me that's bigger. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, man, there, there was so much in here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, start about verse 14. Started talking about that we are delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Paul said, listen, I've been delivered unto death, but, 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 but it, that is nothing. Death might work in me, but life in, 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 the, in you... Verse 13 said he has the same spirit that we believe. He said, I believe in Christ. I, I, my, my hope is set upon him. And then 14 said, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus Christ shall also be present with you. It said, for all things are for your sake that the abundance of grace might through thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not. For though our outer man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. For this light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So this, these small things, these small things that we face, these small afflictions, all they don't feel small at the time. This, uh, this last camping trip, it became one of the other grandson's turn to ride the bike with me. And the grandson who wanted a turn, and it wasn't his turn, had a meltdown. That seemed huge to him. Now, it wasn't huge. It's a small thing. The Pastor Dale, it isn't, what's going on in my life isn't as simple as I didn't get my turn. And yet in God's eyes, it is a light affliction. And the things that we're going through are small in compare. What was it? I reckon the sufferings of this world cannot be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. The things that we're going through now cannot compare to the glory that God has with us. These light afflictions. And we cannot look on the things that are seen. This is something, I'm going to tell you something. I take, I've been taking such comfort in recognizing that today is just, a, is just a small issue. That the things that we face right now are just little. And I can't look at what it, what it looks like right now doesn't matter. My pastor Clayton, who knew something about faith, having seen God raise him up and heal him from cancer and then start three churches and, and, and knew something about God could be trusted used to say simple things as your seamer will get you killed. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to man and the end thereof is death. He says the way it seems will get you killed. If you trust the way it feels, if you trust the way it seems, he said that'll lead to death. So we can't trust what we feel, what we see, even with our own eyes. How many say, well, if I saw with my own eyes, I believe it. You can't even trust your own eyes. Because the natural world has a, is only a small portion of what is yet to come. What, what we are experiencing now is only a blink in the eyes of what will happen. And we must look on the things that are eternal, not the things that are present. 
Now, let me tell you something. I serve a God who brings it around and brings it around and brings it around. And you go through sorrow and then everything will turn to glory. It'll be your turn one day. Come on, shout amen. You know what I'm talking about. Things are going to turn around in this life. It's not all going to be trouble. You're going to have blessings. You're going to experience the glory of the Lord. You will have the blessings of God. You will experience good. Maybe not today. Maybe some of you are in the good. I don't know. Yet to face that trouble. But there's one thing I know all of this whole package, these little struggles we go through, are nothing in compared to the glory of the God that's within us. And that we become strengthened by the might of the inner man. I love that. The young men will get tired, but they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. I can't tell you how many times in my life I don't have a clue how I, I, how, how I manage to pull things together sometimes. I don't know how. I'm out. Somebody said, said to me once, you I don't have anything left, nothing left in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think some of the best messages I ever preached were when I didn't have anything left in me and allow God to begin to move. What my family is going through for us is hard, but it is a light affliction to all the glory that God has given to us and all the glory that is yet to come. It's a light affliction. You know, it's hard now. But it's a light affliction for the glory that is to come. The things that God's doing. I, I tell you, I love what I see. Some of the things that God's doing in our country. Oh, some of them are horrible, but there's also some good. I'm excited to see how much more God's going to do. There are better days ahead. There are better days ahead in the name of Jesus. And not only in this life, but in the life to come, there are better days ahead. And what little affliction we have is going to work a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And I'm looking forward to it. Come on, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let the skies, but I don't even care if I, if, if I finish my projects. I would leave. I, I, I can leave my motor home sitting at the campground. It'd be all right with me. It could just come get us. It could just stay there. Whoever's left, can, you guys can, whoever's, not you guys, but whoever's here, you guys can have it. <laughs> it's over there. Go get it. I won't care. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3. One more. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to give you the abridged version. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 13. Paul said, I desire that you do not faint at my tribulations for you, which is your, for your glory. He said, my heart's desire is that what, because I might go through some tough times, you never miss the glory that is yet to come. He said, don't worry for me. <laughs> don't fret for me because my God is in charge. My God knows what he's doing, and it's all going to be good in the end. Don't fret for me. It says, for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now in him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages and the world without end. Amen. He said, don't fret for me. And I'm bowing my knee and I'm praying that you would be strengthened by the Spirit on the inner man. Now, I don't know where you're at and I don't know what all is going on in your life. And I don't know what may be happening with you or not happening with you. But listen, yes, my family is going through some tough time. But don't fret for us. But I'll tell you what is in my heart. And I mean this with everything in me. 
May God bring the strength to your inner man and renew you and renew your strength so that you can have the confidence to know that God is in charge. God is bigger than your problems. He's bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than the frustrations you're facing. He's bigger than the problems that are standing before you. And he will bring you victory. And I don't know how it comes. I don't know how, what method it's going to be. But God is bigger than our problems. He's bigger than our concerns. And this morning I pray that God would strengthen you on the inner man. We all are facing something. And this morning I pray that God would raise you up, strengthen your inner man, that you would know how big, how tall, how wide, how deep and how high our God is. I love that. What's the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height that you would understand how large God is and prepared for you this morning? And let's pray. Father, I know that there are many things. I pray for those who are in other countries and they're facing situations. That some of these orphanages that are sending us message and they're facing stuff and they're facing problems. God, I can't fix all these problems. We can't, I can't fix the situation that's going on in all of these lives, but this I know, that we can be built, that God can build our inner man and strengthen us and build us up. I pray for peace that passes understanding, that God, there would be a confidence that would begin to come over us, that we can be at peace, that we can be confident, that we can know, oh God, that you are in charge. In the middle of all of the things that go on that you are in charge. I pray for the Holy Spirit right now to go forth and to touch lives and to, and to minister to hearts and to raise them up. I pray for my sister right now. Holy Spirit, bring supernatural strength and peace and, and grace to my sister and to my family and to all those that are dealing with things. God, bring a supernatural peace and power to them. In the name of Jesus. And to those in this room and to those who are watching online and those who are listening maybe later, wherever you're at, we all go through struggles. But we all have the same powerful God. And I pray that he will strengthen you, encourage you, and build you up. In Jesus' name, go forth as a lion, not as a sheep. Go forth in power and in might and in boldness. Be bold and strong and very courageous. For God is before only and never behind. Go bold and strong. God's with us. All victory, strengthened on the inner man. In all compassion, I know we go through problems. And I have great compassion. But there's only one way out of that. That's through the confidence and the power of Christ. And in theirs, there's no fear. There should be no doubt. If there is, you need to get trust, put your faith on him and watch him work for you. I loved it when God said, when Moses said to God, how do I know it's you? One of my favorite things that God said to Moses, because I feel like that has been God's response to me a lot. Moses, how do I know it's you? Now, let's get this right. He's standing there. The bush is not being consumed. A loud, thundering voice from heaven. And he's asking, how do I know it's you? How do I know? Most of us would think that'd be enough. He said, how do I know it's you? And God's response to Moses was, when you go there, all those slaves get released, you bring them out of Egypt, and you get back here to this mountain, when it's all done, then you're going to know I sent you. When the breakthrough comes, you're going to go, see, I knew it. I knew it all the time. I knew it was going to happen. How do I know when God comes through, you will know. And you'll see it. Trust him. Be strengthened by the inner man. And God bless you. Happy 4th of July. You know, I love our country. God bless this country. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you guys. Have a great day. I'm going to get out of here pretty quick and go check out with my family. But.
Whew. Love you. Be strengthened on the inner man in Jesus' name. Amen.